goes by, but that's not a sign of victory in my sense. It feels like you're, you're, you're adapting to something I do, wouldn't want to adapt to, which is, you know, it's never going to get, you know, here's your little disposable bag or whatever. It just blew my mind. So I, uh, and there was two nice people, and they didn't know what we were up about. So we just went into the recovery thing. Because there is a solution, and there there is a possibility of being free, and I don't know that what that will look like for you, but free from the bondage of self. That's the whole point. Yeah, it isn't about not drinking, and using. It's the underlying condition is what everyone who's ever gone to a non-duality meeting is is having at the same time. Yeah, there's there's an over like an over steroided activity, mental activity that it is in the ideation of self, the idea of being the doer, the feeler, the taster, the toucher, the thinker, yeah? And in Buddhism they call it the cherishing of self. So there's sort of, it's not just something happening, it's, there's a sweetness to that. There's, the mind is addicted to it, the mental, the small level mind, let's say. It's addicted to that, yeah? And then, it sets off an irritability, restlessness, and discontent in a lot of the sufferers, and then they seek a solution to that, which usually reinforces the problem. So I never met a person who did cocaine that got to a point where they were completely satiated and satisfied, and they thanked the goddess cocaine, and oh, thank you, and <laughs> gave the cocaine away. No, it never comes to a good ending, because first of all, it's a misdiagnosis. Yeah, because that which is trying to get out of the addiction, yeah, is the um, the origin of the beginning of the addiction. That's what you were trying to get out of while you were using. You were trying to forget self or get out of something, yeah? And now that which you were trying to get out of is bigger than ever. And it's explained in non-duality perfectly by Ramana Maharshi, if you ever heard of him or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's like the godfather of this idea of non-duality. So, and he, he, a lot of people respected him a lot, and they wrote about his teachings. He didn't really put it out except in one, I think, he did with his own dialect, Indian dialect. So, uh, so a lot of people listened to him for many, many years, and they wrote about his teachings. So there's similarities in everyone who wrote about him. And when something was important, it would be like uh, emphasized with the greatest mystery or the problem. Or, and so in this case, he presents uh, an underlying basis that we may be under right now without knowing it. And the underlying basis is there's a presupposing. So from the head, let's call it that. The head is presupposing the non-existent thing to be existent, yeah? So the head is sort of standing between the subjectiveness, let's say the unformed sentience or awareness or consciousness, and the body. And the head has wedded the consciousness with the body. So now Paul is who's conscious. And Paul is pictured not as consciousness, but as a body, yeah? So now when every time there's a recognition of consciousness, because you're awake, yeah, that recognition of consciousness gets completely neutered because it's used to infer that it's Paul that's conscious. So the solution fortifies the problem. It's mind-boggling, really. It's a perfect, perfect strategy. Because the only thing that's always happening is what we are. And it, let, it tries to claim that what you are, which is always happening, to imply it to what you're not, which has never actually happened. And it's mind-boggling. So the I am is fueling the story of I am Paul. So the I am of existence. So Ramana put it very clearly. Pre, obviously, means something to do with time. Yeah. So there's a presupposing. So like, when I'm home, I suppose a lot of shit. My head does. I assume a lot. I assume a store is open without calling it. And then I drive to the store, and I find out it's closed. And I'm surprised. But I could have called them, but I just, I, 
I had, I assumed that I knew that it was open and it wasn't, yeah? So this ignorant persists, yeah? So in this case, there's this presupposing, so, or assuming, what? What's being assumed is this, no, this thing is actually the subjectiveness, yeah? So this thing is what's having these experiences instead of being a vehicle for experiences to be had, it's the one that's having the experiences. So the subjectivity, and if you don't believe this is a, a subjectivity event, you and I will respond differently to the same thing. Yeah. So that thing does not impose a reality on us. We give it the reality we see in it. Yes. So let's be clear. That is the foundation of dreaming. Yeah. Dreaming. The act of dreaming is based on the Buddhism view that everything is, is an appearance which is inherently empty and we give meaning to it, or meaning comes through us to that. that. And if that gives us meaning, it was given meaning first. And one of the meanings it was given is that it's going to bite us in the ass. But it doesn't have the ability to bite us in the ass. It's given the ability. So in the Course it says, the Course in Miracles, it says, okay, the mind projects, and then we perceive. So the dreaming is being projected, and then as the dreamt, we perceive it as if it's real. And it makes it, a, and I'll get back to Rama, but it makes it very clear, he says, you and I are the dreaming of this event. We're gonna forget that. How do you forget that? You don't, and you can seemingly forget it by the identification as a body. So you're now identified as the dreamt, and then it seems to make it very hazy about the dreaming, yeah? So now you're looking at life as the dreamt, so you're seeing the dreaming as real because it's lending that reality to the, this unreality, which is the dreamt, all right? So if that's the condition people are in, and they're, they're supposing that, yes, that's the condition most people are in, you know, that now, all the meaning that you're giving things, you're now giving those things the meaning to bite you in the ass. You know? So now, that which you're dreaming is now affecting you. So look at it as a thought. A thought, and then my thought, yeah? You own the thought, the thought can own you, yeah? If you have a thought and it's called yours, it could probably ruin your day. If I w saw that thought as yours, it wouldn't ruin my day. Right. The same thought, if I saw it here and it called it mine, it could ruin my day. So it's obviously not the thought, yeah? So there is a dreaming, and we're it, yeah? And as Ramana said in another point, but let's get to the presupposing. So there's a presupposing the non-existent thing exists, yeah? So it, mix up, it mixes up the subjectivity of the spirit with the body, okay? So now, and now we want to get salvation for the body because we think it's us. So it created a whole, the mistake isn't going to be noticed, you're living from it. Yeah. You're living from it. That's the new basis that you believe the subjective event is being had by an object, and the object is doing it. Yeah. This is duality, and the whole point of non-duality is to negate that idea. That's all it is to me, really. It just follows the wording, not to. Yeah. So where's the two-ness represented? Do you believe the world is dualistic? Of course not. This is a dreaming, and we're seeing it dualistically because we're looking from dualism. We're looking from a mishmash of subject-object right now. Yeah? Everything, and when the head arises and claims the conscious contact, it says you're the one that's in contact as a body. And no matter what you do after, it doesn't change the before. Yeah? But the before will change a lot about the after, for sure. Because if you realize you are what you're looking for, you're going to stop looking for it. Yeah? If the seeker is the sort, it's going to probably diminish the drive to seek, pretty much. Yeah? And what happens, you're here now, which you've always been, and yet you're awake to it, which you may not have seemingly been. Yeah? So now you're awake to being awake, which makes you... The presence makes you available, and if you're present and available, you're of service. You're going to be used, yeah? And everyone here is going to be used. 
Something is going to take you over. It's really a nothing. But some of us have been taken over by addiction and alcoholism. And it feels very, very unique. But if you look at it, what happens with these, all these thousands of unique cars? They end up at the three same parking spaces, institution, jails, and death. You've got to realize you're the car that's being driven. You're not the driver. Something has taken you over. Well, the same thing in a way. There's something that's already there. Yeah, and when you're f when you're done being taken over, you'll see that you've always been taken over. But this thing, you'll never have the effect of this thing that actually has you. Yeah, you're gonna have be able to enjoy peace of mind. You're gonna feel this conscious presence. Yeah, you're gonna feel new power flowing. You'll you'll feel it. It'll be tactile. It's not gonna be a cerebral event which your head tries to use to get out of fucking responsibilities. Like, well, if there's no self, then I don't need to go to AA, and now they're drunk non-dualists, yeah? It doesn't fucking work. You don't use, the mental state can't use non-duality for an answer, it doesn't work. It's being one, you know? So you drop into that, and you start chill, you start living, and you start seeing things differently, and what happens is, if it's, Dominating for years, you're going to come to an observation that you're traveling lighter, really in spite of the self. Yeah? Not because the self has been cultivating a new idea, but because you've lost interest in the self cultivating a new idea. You've lost interest in the self getting to a higher plane. You've lost interest in a lot of stuff. You do. And what happens is there's a gaining of interest. And I don't know how it's going to be for you. You're going to have the joy of finding out where the interest goes because it's going to be taken off that dead carcass and it's probably going to enrich your day. Yeah? Instead of enslave it to yesterday and tomorrow, it'll enrich you now. There'll be an ease and comfort now, not a drive to find ease and comfort later, which is slavery to me, seriously. So, Non-duality, not two. This is, what is duality where we're sitting? Dualism. The dualism of mixing up the subjective experience and attributing it to an object. That's duality. That's dualism, and this message is the negation of that. It's not battling it, it's not fighting it, it's not killing it, it's not rehabbing it, it's not sending it to school, it's losing interest in it. That's the beauty. If you lose interest in it. You don't lose interest in thoughts, you lose interest in the thinker. Yeah. And then the thoughts are lost interest in. If you try to lose interest in the thought, that's interest in the thinker. But if you lose interest in the thinker, you're going to lose interest in thoughts. If you lose interest in the idea of being the doer, you're going to be much more freed up by all the doing. In other words, I know people in AA, 40 years, in our world here, you do a crime, there's statute of limitations, yes? Like this happened to me, I was sober for like, I don't know how many years at this time, I got a letter from New York where I grew in Long Island, and I saw the title and it was the, from the Fugitive Squad. And it was, it was Nassau County asking, telling me I had to be in court Monday morning at nine o'clock to face old charges. And as, uh, of course, I got right off and bought a ticket on United to get there. I said, fuck that, I'm not going back to New York. So I swear to God, this, this is the deal. You've got to be at 9 o'clock in Mignola. I said, oh, yeah, I'll be right there. So my, my brother-in-law worked for a judge. He was a lawyer, but he was working for the judge. So I got in touch with him, and I said, hey, can you check this shit out with me? I got this thing from the future. Side. And it's just a fishing expedition. They go through all their files and then they stop and they say, okay, let's, let's set up a free refrigerator thing and see if these fucking dumb jamokes go there and then you arrest them when they come to claim their free refrigerator. So it was one of those. He says, and he says, I asked him, what, do you, what should I do? He says, just don't come back to New, to New York. I said, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so now I've passed the other level of statute limitation free. Yeah? 35 years sober. I never get, there's nothing to check anymore. When I go, if I get pulled over and I get a federal, like, secondary uh, interview coming through customs, there's no joke. I do not have a record. What happens in your head? 
I know people with 40 years of sobriety still fucking living under a, a cloud of guilt and shame. Not because of what they did, because they did it. They are captured by the doer, not the doing. They forgot the doing. The problem is they haven't forgot the doer. And the funny, it's funny, but it's sad. My experience and observation of being a, a real addict and a real alcoholic is something took me over and used me for transportation. Yeah. I was compelled, I was driven, I was imposed upon, but you're not gonna fucking convict me as the doer. It was so obvious in my own intimate experience of active addiction, there's no way in hell I would have done most of the shit I was driven to do. Never, never could I have ever come up with the situations I found myself in and what I did. Yet, when you come out of it, the, the stamp of the doer, it doesn't matter. It, it's contrary to all visual evidence in your own life. Doer, doer, doer. So here's these people, they haven't drank and used for 40 years, but they're fucking captured by guilt and shame. Not based on what they did, because they basically forgot that about the doer. And it's really incredible. It gets you as the doer, and it gets you that you should have done something. So it gets you both, you get fucked both ways. You get fucked as the doer, and the one who should have done it, and he didn't do it. <laughs> so where is the freedom? Not from changing all you're doing. That could be good, it could help. It, recovery does that. I don't go to jail every week anymore. But to see you're not the doer is the freedom from the fucking guilt and shame of it all. It is. And it's about fucking time. Seriously. You know, Paul, in, yeah. the, in the Catholic Act of Contrition, it says, to forgive me for the sins that I've done and also for the things that I haven't done. <laughs> it's funny that you say There you go. I mean, like, it gets you both ways. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I should have done that. I should have, you know, it's just unbelievable. Well, Catholicism is insane. You're already stamped with a mortal sin yeah, and you don't remember doing it. So you basically are damned to hell already before you get your 80 years of trying to make it better. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah? So here, non-duality is just that. It's a negation of the duality that we're looking at life from and how we look at life from, knowing it or not, is in a dualistic manner. Because as this, so is that, yes? So the dualism, to deal with it, not to become an expert of the duality of the world, yeah, but to see the dualism right here. Sometimes you feel it you're thought about, and sometimes you're the thinker. The thinker would be sort of the subjective, the thought about is the object. It goes back and forth. That's what non-duality is negating. You're not the long-lasting, independent, separate thing. It's not telling you what you are, because it knows if you see what you're not, you're gonna find out what you are. You don't need to put words on it, because you can't know it, because you're it, yeah? You can't experience it because you're it, but it's going to influence all your experiences, but it's not an experience. You'd have to be something else to have that experience. So when they say this is indescribable, incomprehensible, unknowable, get it so that you stop mm -hmm. trying to know it and describe it and comprehend it, and then turn that, that interest into comprehending what's comprehensible, the mental activity. You can see selfing. You can see it. You can see what it does, it infers, and it's basically driving to get manufactured consent, <coughs> like the old, uh, what's his name? Book. Yes, the head, just like he talked about media, this is the media of the head. Manufacturing consent. It's usually presenting false evidence and it's hoping the audience is going to have it appear to be real. Yeah? What's it play? Do you see thoughts outside of people's foreheads? They're playing to something. The, the thing that's calling itself you is playing to the you it knows you are. It's playing to the audience that we are. We're not the character. It has us believing we're the character, but I see it in recovery. The head will try to convince someone in there for four or five hours to get loaded. It will. It will, it will spend weeks to bring you to its idea of surrender, which is fuck it. And then when you hit fuck it, you're apt to do almost anything. 
what the, who, who's it talking to? It's saying it's you. Well, who's that you talking to? Because it's attempting to get some kind of consent from that you, because we're the power source. It has no light of its own. It has to draw the light from here and be put on into it. Yeah? And what does it do? It focuses the spotlight and gets ideation of self. Self-centeredness, if you look at like a camera, it's got a fixed aperture. It's pretty much, no matter, it may have a little movement here and there, but basically the aperture sees everything as how it pertains to self. Yes? And try to work on this. You may get a little release and shit like that, but it has the habit of closing back to its factory <laughs> setup, which is like myopic, yeah? But right there, that's the activity of the mental state in time, is the timeless aperture. And that thing is pretty fucking wide. And it has flexibility. It can expand and contract, but it never loses its true size in any expansion and contraction. And this is panoramic. Now, now, the myopic will not admit the possibility of the panoramic, but the panoramic sees the myopic. It sees the self-centeredness. Yeah? And if you see the self-centeredness, obviously you are not the self-centeredness. And that's the breaking of the real magic bond, which is the act of being identified as what you're not, really. And we rely on the head, and the head is always in the act of being identified as a self. It's always taking the subjective experience and attributing it to the object. Yeah? When you think of you, you cannot think of you as a spirit. You can't capture it. You think of you as a body that's becoming spiritual, let's say. You know, you got the loving gaze going, whatever. Yeah? But it's all just like a path. What goes on a path? A body. The spiritual path, not one spirit has ever taken a path. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's formatted to fit the fucking narrative, which is it's going to be you as a body going on a path, and then you're trying to reach the apex of the fucking spiritual mountain, fearing you may roll down to the bottom of the hill. It's all body-oriented. I had this thing. I was introduced to not... Uh, the uh, Course in Miracles. I'd been around the block in spirituality, and I figured that the body had something to do with the, obstru uh, the obstruction of clarity, yeah? So there was a lesson in the Course in Miracles, which was, I'm not a body. I said, all right, I'm going to say this a lot. I'm not a body, I am free, I'm just as God created me, something like that. And I would chant it almost. And after about a week, I realized... The only thing that would chant it's not a body is the body identification. <laughs> so my chanting I wasn't a body was being claimed by the body identification. So my chanting I wasn't a body was reinforcing the, the insane idea that I was a body. This is the whole point. This is how non-duality is going to reveal itself to you. You're going to see most of the shit you're doing is producing an opposite effect of what you've been looking for. And after you see a few of them, they're the same genre. They're the same seamless logic. And it's going to make a fucking link, yeah? And things are going to collapse, and you're going to be convinced, yeah? It doesn't mean the head stops. It means you can, you don't, you're not going to be affected by the head stopping or not, because you will see it's not you. It's just that fucking simple. And this is what how a lot of people I meet get caught up in. They still believe it's you, and when they have a big change, and they realize that's not changing, yeah, because they believe they were doing it, and when the they completely changed, they would stop doing it. You're not doing it. It's mentally mechanical, yeah? The basic fact is, is conscious contact, the mental state gets a whiff of it, rises and claims the contact to fit its narrative and reinforce its story. So the idea of you wanting to be free is really being used to enslave you to a you now. Yeah? So he says there's a presupposing of this non-existent thing wanting to get salvation for the non-existent thing. That's the basis that's going on, the mental one. He says after that, if that's the case, which he believed it is, 
Your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. How can they destroy it? So to me, this is like walking into a store and you're looking for hiking boots and the guy brings you sneakers and he just says, try them on. Yeah? You're sure you're going to need hiking boots, but you may really need sneakers. So when you put them on, if it fits, wear it. Yeah? And this is what happened with me. I went to satsang. One of the biggest hits was this statement from Hawaiian Po, a great Zen master, which was, whatever can be perceived cannot be perceived. So it's the perfect thing we were just speaking about. The object is what can be perceived is not that which is perceived. Okay? Now go up into the head and listen to it for a five minutes. And its whole basis is that which can be perceived is what's perceived. Yet, his understanding was that which anything that can be perceived cannot be that which is perceiving. There you go. You're off the game board. Listen to the head. Do you think you're going to change that as that? Is, are you going to get out of self as self? We have this in recovery. The, you think spiritual seekers are trying to get out of self. Fucking go on a 10-day cocaine retreat. <laughs> to do coke for 10 fucking days, you're going you're gonna, <laughs> to, if you survive, you're going to see more than you would have gotten in any other retreat, man. Because the shit will reveal itself. Yeah, because it always overplays its hand. If you can just not buy its lottery ticket and just suspend it, it's overplaying its hand. You will see the emperor with no clothes. You will. And the beauty of this understanding is you'll be able to see the emperor with no clothes while it's wearing clothes after all. <coughs> yeah? It's not just a peak experience because the emperor with no clothes is sort of like a peak experience but you get fooled when you see it in clothes again. You won't get fooled after a while. You'll see, even dressed in full regalia, you're seeing it with no clothes. We shared it yesterday, because I had a very, it was very impactful. I got a look at my mother, naked once, when I was 11, inadvertently, and I saw something that I couldn't forget, yeah? And it shook me up. I was 11 years old, I saw, and I went, oh. Yeah. And so every time I saw my mother with clothes on for quite a while, I saw her at that picture of no clothes. The, no, the clothes didn't help me. I saw her at that shot that I see. It's sort of like this message. Yeah? There's a point where there's a flip and you're convinced. And it could mean only 50% flipped over. Yeah? Yo, are we going to record it? Is it done? It's recorded. Oh, yeah? I was wondering if you have the USB block. If only the tiniest little bit of interest flips off of the self, you're going to start traveling later. Yeah. Yes? Because the greatest migration of this message is a loss of interest. That's what it is. You lose interest in the head. Because it's not you. You do. It's just, you just fucking lose interest in it. And then you lose interest in all of its insane ideas, like uh, you're out of the moment, and so you better read a book about how to get into the moment. And, and then you read the book, How to Get Into the Moment. You didn't even read the whole thing. You buy the new, next one, How to Really Get Into the Moment. And it just goes fucking on and on and on. But the whole premise is based on you're out of the moment, which is insane. You're out of the moment. Yeah? No, you're never out of the moment. Look at the surveillance camera. You think you weren't somewhere? You're captured in the surveillance camera. You were there. Yeah. And, and, and this is insane, isn't it? Truly. Can you imagine? This is the whole point of non-duality. What non-duality, I hope, does is it's got a clarity of understanding, as this guy Nizagadada would say. It's a clarity of understanding that brings out into stark contrast the misunderstandings that we're living from. Yes? where a lot of shit won't bring that stuff out of the weeds, but these, this message will bring it out. And then you see it. It's like a turtle that extends its, its head out too far. You see something, yeah? And that misunderstanding doesn't have to go. 
That's another part of the clear understanding. You don't try to change the misunderstandings. You just see you're not the one who has the misunderstanding. It's simple as that. Yeah? And then you're going to lose interest, and the value that's put on understanding will drop. And if the real value will be right now, right here, being what you are, which is you and I are awake. You're not going to become awake. You are awake. Now here in duality, you can seem to not be awake. It doesn't change the fact you are. Or you can seem to be awake. And it will actually allow some traveling later. But the awakeness is a fact. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do you go to seeing lessons? Do you, do you start sweating because you've heard a lot today? I heard way too much audio. It's fine. I can't take it. Yeah. It doesn't seem to demonstrate any thought or effort, does it? This consciousness that we're experiencing. Why would you think thought and effort is going to bring me to that which demonstrates no thought or effort? The only way you could believe thought and effort will bring you to that which demonstrates no thought and effort, you must see that which demonstrates no thought and effort as not you. If you saw it as you, you would lose this allegiance to that which thinks everything has to have thought and effort. But because we see it as us, we follow its dictates, and we're trying to arrive somewhere we already are. It's like we're following yes. rules that don't apply to us. Exactly. If we, the head, just like they say in The Course of Miracle, the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. So if you're listening to the messages of the brain, it's talking to you as a body. And what do bodies do? They do shit. Yeah? And what if a body wants to get somewhere that's higher than now, it's probably going to take thought and effort. It's going to have to get a ladder and shit like that. So everything is applied to the body identification. Yeah? Exactly. So the requirements that you feel you need to meet aren't there for you. They're there for the mental idea of you. And it's like an obstacle course, they always, they put another water hole in there. It's never fucking, you know, you see the map of the obstacle course, you make it through, they add another fucking obstacle there. It just goes on and on and on. Have you gotten, how many years have you been seeking? Can I ask you, or just seeking? Yeah. How many years? Long time. There you go. How many years here? Just vaguely. 30. 30 years, all right? Yeah, lifetime. Lifetime. A long time? Yeah. Let's just have a, let's just get a number, 10 years each. So we have 10, this 200 years. 200 years in this room. Where has it gotten you? Here. See, the greatest success is this shit failing you. Because then you're left with your own devices and you'll see they're not your devices. Yes? That's the beauty of spirituality. It's going to fail you. <laughs> it is. The saviors are going to fail you because you're not there to be saved. It's going to fail you. That's the value. Yeah? That's the value. Just like a guy at our zoo, he didn't know if he should go to any more Vipassana, you know, Vipassana's or meditation, yeah? So he didn't know if he should go to any more Vipassana retreats. So he went to the Vipassana retreat and realized he doesn't have to go to the Vipassana retreat. That's how it works a lot, yeah? You do the shit, and the shit's gonna tell you there's no need to do it. <laughs> yes. Is there a way to untrain all of it? I mean, no, I'm not. I I don't care about it. Uh -huh. Just as long as it's not burning houses down and shit. Let it have its little square in the zoom. Yeah. It's gonna make a big story out of a little fucking situation. Yeah. You're not gonna rehab it. It's like a. It's not gonna become a service animal. It's got more of a parasitical nature. But, I mean, is there a way to untrain myself from thinking I'm me? You don't want to untrain that thing that's thinking okay. you're me, because the thinking sees you as me. Okay. You see the thinking from somewhere else than thinking. The premise in non-duality, if you hear it from, is that you are what you're looking for. Or as Ramana Maharshi said, the greatest mystery, being ourselves reality, is reality wanting to attain reality. Yeah? So that which believes it's the thinker, don't waste fucking any time to try to make it an unthinker. 
It's just pointless, my feeling. You just see you're not that, yeah? So basically you get a sense the head doesn't feel secure without knowing, but the greatest security is the mystery of what you are, truly, yeah? The mystery of what you're not is obvious to break down. You can see it. You can see selfing. You can see how the head does what it does. You can see its tendency just to claim everything that happens. You can see it. It's not very difficult, yeah? But the great mystery of us is unfathomable, yeah? You have to live from it, and you are living from it. Yeah? So that quench to try to know as, to, as is taken away, for sure. Because it's above your pay scale, really. <laughs> That's why it says it's indescribable. Is it indescribable? It may not be, but it is to us. Yeah, It's incomprehensible to us. It's unknowable by us, the us that we're not. So fucking get that and look at what's, what you're not, because you can see that from what you are. You can't. But you can't see what you are from what you're not. Because what you're not is really what you are. Yeah? It's that really. It's that simple. So we turn the thing, and Daniel knows me and other people here. I don't think there's nothing new in non duality for 2023. It's the same fucking message. It's the same thing. I heard this exactly as I'm trying putting it out here. It's basically how it got translated when I heard it. If I thought it was going to be different, I wouldn't have come. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, you can be certain that it's the same old, same old. Because the fact that you are what you are is, hasn't changed, nor will it ever change. The facts about what you're not may have been changing, and they may change, and they may be very uncertain, but what you are is what you are, through and through. It doesn't brighten or, and darken, it doesn't contract or expand, it just is. Yeah? And I don't see how, I see many of us have tried the affirmative way. We started without knowing it from a false perspective and we've searched to arrive at the clearer perspective. It hasn't fucking worked. Not because you didn't work it enough, because it was, that's the value of it, is to fail us. So we stop looking and find out where the seeing. Stop, stop using the seeing to look for the seeing. Lose interest in looking for the seeing, and you'll sense the seeing. And when the sense of seeing hits you, it will be like it's always been that way. Because it has always been that way. Nothing we thought has left a mark has left a mark. Yeah? It's like the prodigal son. You ever remember that in the Bible? I think I may have forgotten some of it. But the way I remember it is this guy who's in a pretty nice situation. He has a nice father and family. He goes off and just basically gives them a fuck you. And he starts doing something and he ends up in, down the skids and he ends up in a pigsty, you know, washed up. But he feels his pride to, will not let him just admit he fucked up to his father. So he just keeps on keeping on. And he's in a pigsty fighting a pig for some corn cobs. And then something happens. The fucking whole charade drops. And the next nanosecond, he's on the road meeting his father. And the father's giving him a ring and robes and saying, we have this incredible uh, feast. It just, there's no bridge to that moment. It's like he was fucked and then suddenly he's completely unfucked. It just wasn't like paragraphs of you're fucked and now we had to do the penance. No, he just realized he gave it up. And then there it was. That which was always available suddenly became available to him. But it was always available. His father was always there on the road, with the ring, with the rope. The food was on the, on the oven, being heated. It was ready. We weren't. We had requirements. The guy thought he did so much that he didn't deserve to go back until he finally got over himself with the hopes of probably realizing it wasn't him. Then immediately he had everything that he thought he would never be able to get. And there's no, it's not like three chapters. It was like, he's in the pigsty, the fucking thing drops, and he's on the road meeting his father. That's sort of what it's like. It really is. The solution has a certain feeling of not of time. And so you start telling it. I mean, you pick up a lot of broadcasts, but sometimes when you get it from this, you can tell by the frequency and the suddenness of it that, it's, it's, it's using the same broadband, but it's a different thing, yeah? 
I call them like vertical downloads where the head is mostly horizontal downloads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's always about you and time. But sometimes something inserts itself and it blows your mind. Holy instinct. The Outside holy instinct. Time. Exactly. Outside. So all this Outside. stuff happens, yes. And uh, all it needs is a little more interest in what you are than what you're not. And you can't get there through what you're not. Which is conceptualizing. Well, what you're not, if it tries to lose interest in self, that's interest in what you're not. Just like we have this conundrum that's beautifully displayed in recovery, recovery has a simple answer. It's, and recovery is very sequential. It's time. Yeah? And so the biggest principle in recovery is to, to admit you're fucked and to turn on your love, will and life over to take care of something greater than yourself, yourself, this mental director. But in the book it says first, even before that principle, you got to quit playing God. It's essential. Yeah? And, it's, and they, the reason why, it doesn't work. That's basically, it doesn't go into a great explanation, just as you got to quit playing God, it doesn't work. Yeah? And so, all right, so I'm saying the head is playing God. Like when you used to wake up in the morning and they would tell you how the day was going to be, that's playing God, isn't it? If it's 8 a.m. It's, and it's forecasting a terrible day, it's playing God. So the head is playing God, the head, which we're not. And so the head is, says itself that it's the hero of this statement, I've got to quit playing God. So that which is playing God sets out to quit playing God. That's playing God. Yeah? How can it get out of it? It can't get out of playing God. Yeah? <laughs> So how, how do you get out of it? See, you're not that which is playing God. And you're the God juice it's using, really. It doesn't have its own light. It's, ref it's taking a reflection. It's reflecting the light that we are, the I am, into I am Paul. And it's using the I am of existence to actually support the story of Paul. What better constant support for the story of Paul than the I am. It can't find it in the mental state, that reliable of a support. It's only in our nature that it can get the constant reassurance that it's Paul by misinterpreting the sense of I am. Doesn't it? It's I am Paul. And then basically all I am. Yeah? This is the point. We're not trying to change that. There's just a loss of interest in it. So now the, the interest is in I am, and then you see the head go, I am Paul. And says, see, I told you I'm Paul. And you're not flinching anymore. When it says, oh, you're really out of this moment, you're not out of the moment. Oh, you're really in the moment, you're not in the moment. It's just, you are the moment. And you stop, it's sort of like you're, you're not flinching this way or that way. You're not going this way or that way. You see something going, but you're not calling it you. And then when you listen to people having a conversation, I went up the ass of self today. I went somewhere. No, you didn't. You didn't go fucking anywhere. You're the awareness is that seeing everything. You're not that which you're seeing. The perceived is not what's perceiving. I think it's a... Per to me, it's be it became the last answer in this life. And I... To me, spirituality was a heavy topic. I wanted to get out of me. And I tried with drugs, I tried with reading and science fiction and fucking spirituality. And then when that, the drugs went back to the drugs, that failed back to spirituality. I wanted to get out of me. But as me. That was the, that was the, the conundrum I didn't see. When it said, reality wanting to attain reality. I thought it was Paul, a.k.a. reality, wanting to attain reality. And for Paul to want to attain reality made complete sense to Paul. Because Paul was uncomfortable. Paul was, had myopic views. Paul couldn't uh, manage life successfully a day at a time. I wanted to fucking find reality as Paul, all the while being reality, as not Paul. 
And that needed to be corrected, and it was, through the auspices of satsang. And I haven't done anything other than satsang ever since. So it said, works. Like, Just travel lighter, and I have a lot of shit happen, just like everyone else does. Nothing doesn't make everything great. It just allows you to travel through whatever's happening. Yeah, and you can see, it's it's easier to judge in time. There's been a big shift of lightness, and it's all based on a true loss of interest in this activity of selfing, not selfing trying to lose that interest, in, just loss of interest in it. Selfing doesn't have the volume. You give it the volume. Hearing selfing is different than listening to selfing. Listening to selfing amps up the volume of it. Hearing selfing is lower. Yeah? You get the same presentation, but it's not as loud. Yeah? Because it doesn't it's it doesn't have the amplitude to make the sound. We give it the meaning it has. My head would never be anywhere near as loud as your head in your head. You would have an incredible immunity to the head if you called it my head. Yeah? You would live a lot better as your head. You would. The volume would go down if it was your if it was my head and and it wasn't your head, the volume, you would probably be able to travel lighter through a lot of it. <coughs> but because it's called you, then the you wants to get out of that you, which is the bondage of this whole thing. Yeah? Yeah. So, the best, the best di you know, diagnosis of the problem comes from the relief of the solution, really. I had a belief that they were right in recovery, but I didn't know how right they were. I didn't. I, it's very difficult because it's, it's soaked with this idea of choice and volition. So people believe they're doing the selfing. Yeah. People believe that they're doing that which is defeating them in life. They're not. Yeah. Selfing is a mechanical activity of the mental processes. Yeah? It's the program that, just like if the Course in Miracles put it beautifully, the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. So the brain collating and calculating all the information, it has an agenda with that information. It's not an objective view. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So like you said about the Holy Spirit, in my experience with it and feeling, the Holy Spirit takes the same information that used to be interpreted to the body, interprets it to something else. It doesn't have to change the facts of your life. It changes the meaning of them. It matters who's collating the information. It's not having to control and manage all the information. It's who's collating it, who's interpreting it. Yeah? And I mean, you can tell that emperor can wear a lot of different clothes, but it's the same fucking message. You can tell. It's like the Who song. The new boss is the same as the old boss. <laughs> You're getting the same shit that you were getting before. It just looks a little different. This is our frequency. It's different. Because the, it's coming from you. <laughs> You're not picking it up. That frequency has been pinging the whole time. You're not the, you don't need to follow a light. You're the light that you follow, yes? It's beautiful. And it's been years now. And I'm just as fucked up as I was in some levels. And I have blinders built in or whatever. And you know what? It's fine, yeah? The Urban Renewal Project of changing Paul for the better has been canceled for years. And that budget has been spent on fucking juicy salads with tons of shit in it. Yeah, just, I just don't see, you know, can you imagine working out for 40 years and then gravity always wins? You know, you're 70 and the, all the muscles are dripping. I mean, nothing you try to produce now is gonna stay the same as it is. It's gonna erode. This is the, it's the way it goes, yeah? You peak and then you find it goes. Something waxes and wanes. Shit. Yeah. It's just, it's just, really, it's just insane.
sing to me. I'm just, I was really flipped out with this fucking knock-in thing. Because I felt like I, it was a capitulation. We've just given up. We're just going to try to haunt. You know, like that person was talking about the guardrails on the highway. They just realized the idiots were going to run over, go off the cliff. So let's get guardrails. At least save them from themselves. But in AA, to me, it, I, am, I have a great feeling about AA. And, uh, AA says there is a solution. I don't think a lot of harm reduction is an answer. I don't. I think it's an answer, a temporary answer, to a seemingly uncontrollable epidemic. But I don't believe that's the bottom line. I believe there is a solution. You can be free. You don't need the bags and shit like that. You can be free from that fucking obsession. You can. It's happened with me. I got struck sober, and I swear to God, I've never had a strong feeling and thought about it. And I know what a strong feeling and thought about it is, because I had it constantly for years. So I can verifiably, authentically say they're not strong thoughts or feelings, because I know what strong thoughts and feelings are like to get loaded. It was the constant impulse of my day. So... This has been 35 years it's been, it's been running. It doesn't seem to be slowing down. That's a solution. Yeah? Yeah, so. Yeah, we have to do what we have to do, but remember, it doesn't have to be that way. There are solutions. I've met two of them in this life, and that was getting struck sober and non-duality. Non-duality has become the last answer which takes away the need to have any other answer in this category, this topic, or whatever. It just fucking made it all a new point. Just took out a lot of fucking energy and, and, and spent it now. This is awesome. Man. I couldn't go into my life and get it back. I couldn't. The head's impossible. But seeing what I'm not, just there was such, so much reclaiming because nothing had gone. It was just completely unsuspected. I had no idea. The here that I was constantly trying to get out of was a manufactured mental here. The here that I was sorely seeking was right underneath it. I couldn't see through the mental to see the here. And I don't think you're ever going to as self. I don't. I do not believe. I think it has a defined pay scale, a, a, a defined ceiling, it can't go any farther. It's not AI, it's programmed. It has a program. It's not growing into understanding. It's stuck. It believes it can get out of something. It doesn't realize it's that something it wants to get out of. Self can't get out of self. It just changes the vehicle. Spirituality failed, went got back to drugs. Failed, went back to spirituality. Failed, it's the same thing. It just, it wasn't learning fucking anything. It wasn't. And that's to me is the knowledge. The knowledge of what you're not will tell you this thing is not, it's not on a learning curve. It's driven by a preset programming. Everything that it comes in contact with is used to reinforce the story of self. Yeah? It's like that lady who, you know, saves the snake and feeds it with an eyedropper and puts a little comforter over it. And then it's, it, she's nice to it for days and then she takes it out for a walk and then the snake bites her. And she's surprised because she's been so nice. And the snake goes, hey, I'm a snake. Yeah? This, mental, this mental activity has a parasitical movement. It doesn't see a win-win. It sees a win based on a loss. It needs, a, it needs life that we are the source of. It needs that light. It needs that light to propel this narrative, the story. Yeah, so it doesn't take much, just 50.001% of interest going on to this side, that volume is going to go down in the head. And when you see it, you'll be greeting it with, I'm not that, instead of assuming it's all about you. You are. You're going to greet it this is where the manufacturing of consent is. Something's playing to an audience. It's used to having the audience go like this. You're going to go like this and then like that. There's going to be a pause. 
and you're not gonna you're not gonna sign up for it, and you'll see what happens. Yeah, it has no light of its own. It's an appearance that we're projecting and actually lighting up by tons of interest and attention. Did you see it? We shared it last night. I watched the video, Dan. This is incredible. It's a, a GoPro or something on a bus. Yeah? Coming from the driver's head behind him. And you could see this girl, a young girl, in the first seat on the bus. The bus gets into an accident. And the bus starts rolling over. And you see this girl holding on to dear life her phone. And she's going like this. But the last thing she was going to lose was the fucking phone. Unbelievable. She went 360, and but she was like, the whole time. It was incredible. It was like one picture more than a thousand words. Where does the value lie? She's looking, she has her mobile pawn for Narcissus. Fucking, she just, just like the story of Narcissus. Falling in love with it. It's, that's what fucking technology is now. Fucking scream. Mm -hmm. You tell me that's not the court by Narcissus and the pond? It's exactly. Now we have mobile ponds. We take them with us. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> I swear, and I saw it. It was she was not gonna she would have lost limbs before that phone. And you watch, just ride a bike and watch I bet you this happened with me. You're riding a bike or you see someone riding a, a nice bike. If they start falling off the cliff, they try to save the bike. <laughs> you see someone at a, you know, a drunk at a bar, and they start falling. Why are they? Try they're trying to save the whiskey. Yeah. In the hierarchy of the head, you are not valued. You are you are being used for transportation for something to be expressed. When push comes to shove, you'll see the value, and you're not that valuable to the head. I saw it. I got hurt in the water, got a concussion, a Cronkite, and they brought at this beach where I live. They brought me out and they went see and I was on a long board and I hadn't said anything because it I my body had the nervous system had stopped. Luckily I landed on my back. I couldn't move. So I hadn't had any thoughts for a few minutes. They get me on the beach. The first thoughts I came up was I can't afford the ambulance. <laughs> Just let me lie here. I can't afford the end. It's incredible. And it was so obvious because it hadn't said anything for a few minutes. And it's, it's first, voila, here's Johnny. Was, you can't afford the end. Just die on this beat. <laughs> <laughs> Give someone the wetsuit. It's more valuable than you. The board. It's insane. I don't know. It's, I do know. Because I've had the experience of the, of the shift of interest. I do. And I'm telling you, it's loss of interest is the key. And you, as what you're not, cannot cause that loss of interest. That would just be more interest in the self. Yeah? <laughs> you see it? This negation is beautiful. Non-duality is the cleanest scalpel that's available. It makes the perfect incision because there is no need for the surgery. Yeah, it's beautiful. And so, yeah. I'm so happy to have a chance to share it because it's like a bird would like to sing. This thing has, just like AA, saved my life on the action figure level. And it's sort of like I was in hell and there was a bus and that bus had AA on it and it took me out of hell and it fortified me to go back into hell and say, hey, there's a bus that comes at 1230 every day. Look at the AA. Maybe you're nothing, but there's a bus out of hell. I mean, that's how I feel. So, I mean, I went last night. It was sort of a dead situation. And I sometimes I feel like I don't, uh, you know, I once did a talk at this place called, uh, what's that, Julian, sitting near San Diego. San Diego. It was really surprising. It was like non-Julian. They had a lot of people came. But they were all eating, and it was like a dinner show. And I stopped. I said, listen, bro, you got to stop eating. Yeah. Just listen. You know, give it that much. Listen to the fucking message. Yeah. Because that was like sort of like a lounge singer. I'm going to show. <laughs> you know, no, I'm not fucking doing that. Yeah. Just, I have a lot of value in this. 
and the value is so high that I don't take it seriously. I joke a lot, but it's not a joking manner. If, if you don't see this activity, you're looking from it. I've met a lot of people who are super clear, but they're not clear about this. And I have no interest in their wealth of clarity when they're unclear about this. It doesn't, I, has no, it doesn't, I, there's no interest in it, I have. Because I, when I was doing these talks in the beginning, it, that which was coming through told me very emphatically, if you don't see this, you're going to be looking from it. So we've never moved from this point. Paul, can I, can I ask you, what were they clear about? What? What's an example of what? Whatever. Fucking Hinduism or just, something like that. I mean, like, just oh, the... I'm talking about a lot of clarity, about a lot of Black things. Information. But they're thinking they're a person. This is what I ran in with the ayahuasca community oh. in, Hawaii, in Toronto, in Canada. It was funny. I was doing a talk there, and I made a joke about, oh, I'd love to be, you know, taking ayahuasca. I'd be in Peru with the paint and everything. It'd be incredible. <laughs> And I'd get a serpent tattoo, and I'd write a book, and i have a blog. And I was just joking around. At the end of the thing, the guy goes, you just told my story. He had a serpent tattoo, <laughs> and he was the main dude of ayahuasca in Toronto, and he had a blog thing, and he had written a book. <laughs> and I had a lot of talks with him, and other people have done a lot of that. And they never, they never ran into the idea that there was no self in the ayahuasca trip. They would come out thinking, I had this incredible fucking event experience. The self was there. That's what I'm talking about, an unclarity around that. And they found it helpful to hear satsang because that's something they were missing. They were walking out just like they walked in to the ceremony with them. That's the confusing part about psychedelics. Mm -hmm. That is confusing about psychedelics. So they help so much, but they're still in the closed loop. They can be. The point is, this is why, this is like someone who's just talking to me about it. I don't, whatever works is great. Just read the warnings that should come with it. Because the head is going to be claiming whatever you're doing. It is. Not, it's not right or wrong, it's just going to do it. So just check it out and just have that understanding. So it's not about not doing anything. It's about seeing you're not the doer of it. Yeah. So I'm not the doer of the ayahuasca. In a sense, yeah. If I ever did it, I wouldn't be the doer of it. This is I. It was surprising. A lot of us have been very earnest in this search. I needed to hear a message of non-duality. I didn't. Did, in all the wax that happened, self just rebounded and just showed up and claimed to be the one and just went on its merry way until I had an understanding. Just like in AA, I got struck sober, but that would have died in a day or two but I was introduced to a way of life that extended the miracle. To me, what extends the miracle of being awake to being awake is the message of non-duality. I do, I believe it. Yeah, because a lot of people, they get it, but then they seem to lose it. What tells them they lost it isn't them. Yeah, and this is what non-duality brings. It was, non-duality didn't start out. All these paths started first, and then the, the inherent, like, uh, mistake in them all was confronted or brought about the message of non-duality, basically. So they explain, like Ramana said, hey, all your stuff you're doing may be reinforcing the imaginary you at the expense of you. Yeah? It's, I mean, if you love Ramana, you listen to what he says. Check it out. And to me, it, it completely... Uh, verified itself from observation. I realized that's exactly what was going on. I was using the Buddha to seek the Buddha. I was calling the Buddha Paul, seeking for a conceptual Buddha, with the hopes of trying to acquire some Buddha attributes through Buddhism. Makes sense. But I'm the Buddha. And then it doesn't make sense. If I'm the Buddha, why would I use the Buddha to seek the Buddha? Exactly. Why would I use light to seek light? I would only use light to seek light if I didn't believe I was light, obviously. See, if I don't believe I'm the light that's available, I'll be using the light that's available to seek the light that I feel is unavailable, all the while being the light. All the light, yeah? Available, not available, all the light, yeah?
This is the dilemma, and it repeats itself constantly. You don't need 800 theorems. You'll see the mistake, the pattern of it, and it just duplicates itself. You will try to get out of what you're not in, and you'll try to get into what you're not out of. It's, it's what happens. It just, it's like a bizarro world to have, like the DC comics. It's just that extreme. You are trying to get out of something you're not in, and you're trying to get into something you're not out of. It's that extreme. And listening to the head, it makes total sense. It makes total sense for you, as Paul, denying the Buddhahood to look for the Buddha. It does. Yet, if you're the Buddha, looking for the Buddha is a way of denying you're the Buddha, obviously. Yes. As the Course of Miracles says, and we'll end with this, the head has made this something else to be yourself. Yeah? Firm in faith in this something else the head has made to be you, you're in the act of denial of what you are. It's just that that's the dualistic movement. Yeah? One's getting reinforced, one is getting underemphasized. There's not one's getting reinforced and the other's getting reinforced. It's usually one's getting reinforced, the other's getting underemphasized. Firm in faith that there's something else that something has made to be you. You're in the act of denial of what you are. That's simple. Take it and believe it or not, it doesn't matter. Just wear it. If it fits, there's going to be revelation. If it doesn't fit, you'll probably come back to the shoe store and it will fit later. You'll think your foot grew, but it didn't. Yeah? This is a one shoe fits all, really. It's just when you may not want it. I'm tired, so you probably, that probably works well. If I was young, I'd be seeking like crazy, probably. I'd have a stubborn <laughs> desire to be there to experience my own absence. I would. <laughs> that fucking got blown out of the water. Yeah, it did. But I swear, I, would. I, I didn't want to. I wanted to be there to get it. The important thing was me being there, not the getting of it. I want to be there. I want to write a blog about my fucking harrowing nights of the soul. Paul, would you say, though, when you start to get those tastes, those downloads, <clears throat> you don't really care about there being a me to be there? Because it's a greater pleasure. It's a greater what? satisfaction. So, Because there's a lot of satisfaction in the cherishing of Oh, I'm self. telling you. Oh, yes, for sure. You know? First of all, the mental satisfaction has a bad <coughs> aftertaste anyway. Yeah. It tends to have some other effect. Yeah. So if you imbibe in the pride of spirit, it's gonna, there's going to be a tightening of a sphincter or something. It's yeah. going to be uncomfortable. This other, the meaning, this is just a whole other ballgame. Yeah. The difference between resting on what's always available and then resting on something that may never have actually been available, quite different. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you're chilled out in a certain level that you can't get to 50 time massages. That, that drive, like, you're free from the need to be liberated. The idea of you being something that needs to be liberated is completely absurd after a while. So you're free from all these drives. And you're just here. And it's this lady in uh, Doylestown presented it perfectly. Uh, she's just, she didn't know it would be just like walking in her garden and just being there with the plants. That's it. That's heaven, so to speak. Yeah. She lost all interest in all the getting better and shit like that. And she's here now, which she's always been. But she's here now and is still away. She's not, it's not an underlying drive or force. She's actually in a pause, yeah, really here. It's great, I know what she was talking about. You can't make that up, you can't paint a picture and then try to visualize it. It's found out, it's a fucking completely different beast than what comes out of the mental logic. You know, sometimes though, I feel like, yeah, in the garden or walking around, especially a place like this, it's very palpable. Yeah. It's in certain situations, you know, Everybody has their own unique type of uh, concept, you know, how, how it was set up, but that it reaches a point where, okay, now I'm in that place where it's really hard to see, you know what I mean? Because I get lost but in, are you in certain intensity. Yeah. That 
it being in a place that's really hard to see, is it going to last forever? No. No, it's not going to last. You're going to out. You're going to outweigh everything. Right. The infinity always wins out with so the finite. With the returning, it just loses the grip. You just lose. Fucking. There's a way out. You're in a situation you can just look away, maybe. You take a breath. It does. It's not like you're going to have to move a mountain. You just take a few breaths or right. chill out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I drink a lot of coffee in the morning, which I usually don't do. I was fucking, like, on speed. Yeah. So uh, instead of getting another one, we went, and then I had a chance to lay down at Mike's place, and I just chilled out, listening to the water fountain. And there it went. You know, the huge threat of the rest of my life dissipated in about five minutes. Yeah. Or you got, like, a rush of anxiety from all the coffee? Well, I was high on yeah. the anxiety. And there's an old aspect of me that I like extreme stuff, so yeah. I do things on purpose to feel, yeah. you know, fucked up sometimes. I do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I, you know, it just happens. I get a, there's a relishing of it in a weird way. Yeah. And But I, you know, yeah. So there's, see, if you had the assurance like there's a, a lesson in the Course in Miracles, which is I like a lot, just the name of it, which is my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. So how how is that attack going to go well if it's attacking invulnerability? Hmm. Right. The invulnerability. I don't care if the attack lasts eighty hours or <laughs> nuclear. It's you're invulnerable. Don't you understand? It makes everything speed up. I, there's a lot of terrible things. I mean, I saw, you know, do I want to see people uh, in recovery? I've been in it like 35 years. I've met thousands of people, but really I met mostly alcoholism and addiction. Their names were Steve and Bill, but what was talking through them was alcoholism. Addiction, and I can see it because I've lived under that tyranny. And I could, not even knowing them for 10 seconds, I could probably predict their life pretty damn close to what was going to happen. Yeah? If they're really an alcoholic and it's active, they're fucked. Yeah? There's only so many ways you can be fucked, but the basis thing is they're going to be fucked. It's just that simple. Yeah? They're talking, they're pointing everything out except this huge elephant in the room. They're pointing at this and that, and you're listening and you're just looking at the elephant. Like this. <laughs> just, what the fuck, bro? Yeah? <laughs> you know? It's just mind-boggling. And I have, and it's been verified. I've watched. My nephew went back out. And I listened to him more because he's my sister's son. But all I talk, I talk to Frank maybe 2% of the time, 98% I've been talking to alcohol. And he said a thing the other day that blew my mind. He was at the same rehab that he was 20 years earlier. Can you imagine? So he's been on the same oval, running the race. He stopped here at a point of incomprehensible demoralization, and now he's back 20 years later. Same. And you would think that that would catch your eye, but it went right over his head. But to me, I was like, fuck, oh, don't you realize that's just, you were there 20 years ago, and now you're back? That blew my mind. That's one thing I noticed, the stories is the repetitiveness. It's so unoriginal, yeah, it becomes it so unoriginal. It's it only has a certain amount of uh, <laughs> hoop, you know, like uh, the film. <laughs> it's not like a... And it's not like an infinite movie. It's a fucking right. movie. It replays itself and changes. A, you play different parts, maybe. And right. instead of the Yukon, it's in fucking New York City. But it's the same fucking theme, mostly. You end up with being alone and right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that hasn't worked out well. I'm right about it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so fulfilling. I'm right. No. Uh, there's a lot of examples, you know, but the one they use is the screen and the film appearing on the screen. If you wait the screen and then you await it, await it when the film is being played, it's the same way. Right. There's no existence in the movie. 
Yeah? It's appearing on existence, which is us. And the movie is a very, very, it doesn't even, it doesn't saturate the screen. When it's a, a, a tragedy, the screen doesn't get wet by all the crying in the film. Does it? If it's a 4th of July movie, this, it never gets ripped. Yeah, it's the, 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 it's the most important thing of the theater, and it's the simplest uh, financial cost. You buy one screen, probably. Probably will last a long fucking time, yeah? And yet you can show thousands of movies on it. It's yet none of the movies leave a mark on the screen. The screen doesn't show movie tread, you know? The tread goes <laughs> down on the screen 50,000 miles. It's not like that. The screen is representing what we are, and there's a movie being projected on it, a mental one, and we're in the act of dreaming right now. Yeah. People get a hit of it. You can just give a person a goggle and put virtual reality. They get that, but we're in virtual reality without a goggle, really. Yeah. So we're walking around doing exactly what we did with the goggles, but we don't have the goggles, so we, this is the real place. But see, at night when you dream, you have the, the awakening, which is waking up in the morning. In the awake dream, there isn't a morning for most people. There isn't a morning. So the awake dream seems to have a lot more meaning and time because we don't wake up like we do at night. If we were in the dream at night and we didn't wake up, it would be like this. It would be a reality. We'd be acting as if it was real because we do when it's dreaming. Yeah? It's when you wake up, that tiger that was scaring you in the dream seemingly loses the ability to scare you because you gave it the ability to scare you when you thought it was real. When you see it as not real, that ability is taken. Now that same tiger doesn't scare you. Just like when you see The Wizard of Oz. You ever remember that movie? There was explosions and everything, and when they were hearing it, it got them really afraid, but then when they heard explosions after seeing the little dude behind the curtain, the explosions didn't create the same effect because they'd seen through it. Yes, yes. You're awake. Yeah. You can act like you're not awake, but it doesn't change the fact. You're awake. What does that mean? You're present. What does that mean? You're available. What does that mean? You're going to be of service. Yeah. There's only two, you can serve only two masters in duality. In AA, we say it's the higher power or self, yeah? You can't serve two masses at the same time. So, the higher power, Holy Spirit, or self, yeah? Trust the finite self or trust the infinite, that's it. And you'll, you'll judge the tree by its fruits. You'll know exactly what's going on because how you see things is gonna change. Yeah, there's been a shift, the old regime isn't becoming a new regime. You're leaving the old regime. Yeah, yeah. We can't change the old regime. It's like the movie. I don't think so. You, you can bang on it. You can do it, but yeah. it's not going. It's like going to the movie, going to the movie screen and banging on it. Hey, don't go around the corner. They're going to kill you. No, it's the same here. Exactly. It's like it's been shot. It's in the can, and now we can see it differently. You know, yes, and exactly. Yes. So let's say you're the, the running time of the movie is 88 years. <laughs> so you're going to live 88 years watching the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and when you pass away, I bet you there's no feeling that you were in any movie. I don't think you're going to remember shit. <laughs> it's going to be like it never happened. Just like yesterday, right now, feels like it never happened. Yeah. Doesn't it? The only way I can... I, the only way it can have any presence is by presence remembering it. What? The only, what do you think gives, there's a thing in the course, they call it uncaused effects, yeah? Which is dreaming, yeah? So the uncaused effect would be, I'm afraid of a dreamt tiger. The dreamt tiger would be an uncaused, and it would produce an effect, yeah? So this whole place is about uncaused effects, yeah? So people, are reacting to what's not happening most of the time during the day. And because we are what's happening, we can make it seem like what's not happening is happening. Nothing else can do that. My, my dog isn't dwelling over yesterday's ball chasing. It is, it's fucking like the, the etch-a-sketch has been cleared. Yeah? And I 
can do it. I can throw that ball 800 times. It's basic, its body gets tired, but its enthusiasm is exactly the same from the first time. That's why they, they, they invented those fucking things. Because you throw your arm out, you know? You have those little things, it throws it for you. The dog just keeps going on and on and on. And on. Every time I come out of my room, the dog that we have is like the first time she's ever seen. She's fucking, <laughs> fucking incredible. You know what I mean? It's like just on me, like all the time. It's just, it's just, because it's like new. When she doesn't see me, I probably disappear. And then it's like, what? It's back again. It's great. Just so, yeah. Yeah. So if we got to go, we're going to try to get home. Yeah. Paul, I thank you. I appreciate this. You, you talk so much. Is there a basket we can pass? Is there any yeah. Kind of oh yeah, we should get some donations, man. This, this would turn into the, the doing it for free tour. I'm so out of the. I don't but have any cash free? ever yes. anymore. It doesn't matter. You can just do but do I get online, paid? right, or whatever. What's you can do online, yeah. Venmo, whatever. But I've spaced out. We gotta go. Just donate online. online. Yeah, Nine Venmo and PayPal and yeah, PayPal. Cash App. I've been driving at night. Yeah. This whole time. I just have an Apple Pay. I don't even have a car. I lost my car. I don't even have a You have a credit card? No, because I didn't want to replace it because then I would have to like, change all my payments. Sorry, right. Right. So I just do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely hit up the pay. It's a little bit flipped out. And then Wednesday, same thing. Two hours. It's insane. Yeah. And we also have Zen Bitch. Uh, we have a lot of shirts. I have all new things oh, nice. there. And books are there. And please look at uh, support the Zen Bitch stuff. Oh, we're going to schedule it differently next time so you have time to malinger. I'd love to come. Yeah, here. yeah. Come malinger. Well, we're here today. He's malignant. We're not here Thank you. We could stay if we want, right? But where's Mike? But I think we better get back because I got an early thing in New Jersey. Oh, wow. I've got to call something. My man. Nice to see you, bro. You too. Yeah. And River is upset he's not getting to see you. He really wanted to come. Oh, the kid, yeah. Oh, great. Oh, really? Play a little YouTube for <laughs> Yeah, please check the beautiful shirts, women's and men's shirts. And uh, if you want to close calls under arrest. He moved to California, and then he moved to California and moved to your church. Who? That guy? Chris? Yeah. No, he's in Minneapolis. I think he flew to New Jersey. Hooked up with them there, and then they drove here together. So he's going back to Minneapolis. Huh? Oh, oh, that's Daniel. He uh, moved here like three years ago. And he lived in California. Yeah, yeah, we knew him is back there. Is it common to come? Is it a lot of Californians? Um, yeah. There's a lot of Californians that have left the state to to every other state. <laughs> yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Are you happy in Massachusetts? Yeah, I really like her place. Yeah. She's not around.